In this demonstration, we'll discuss how to set up a free open LDAP server on CentOS 7. I've actually already deployed a, a CentOS 7 VM uh, in Google Cloud uh, Platform. Uh, I've actually explained how to deploy a free server using their free tier or their always free program in another video, which I'll link in the description. So you may want to watch that one first. But this is a, a VM package, CentOS 7, just as it comes uh, from the Google Cloud Platform. So you. Uh, yeah, there's no other prerequisite work done done on this. Um, there are a couple things you might want to do, like set up MTP and set up your time server. But for the sake of, of this demo, um, you know, I won't I won't have to do that. But uh, um, first thing you're going to want to do is uh, open up the SSH session uh, using your client or using the, the built-in client, uh, and then this document will be linked in PDF format uh, in in. Uh, in the description so you can follow the commands appropriately. But uh, the way that the commands work is, is purple command, purple uh, lines are the actual commands that we're gonna input into the VM. And then uh, anything that's green is things that you might wanna highlight that are specific to your domain or your deployment, uh, including passwords and things like that. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is log into our, our unit and then we're gonna wanna um, get privileged access. So we'll just uh, ele elevate here. Uh, and get to uh, a root uh, login here. So we're logged in as root, and then what we're gonna do is use, uh, one thing I like about CentOS 7 is it supports uh, RPMs and, and YUM, and um, I don't think I'm gonna use any RPMs, but basically what we're gonna do is copy and paste that line in. And what it's gonna do is actually download each of these packages, so you can see, uh, install open LDAP, compact L open LDAP, client servers, et cetera, SQL, open all that. Um, it'll install all of these automatically. Shouldn't take too long, but this is the context. If you get an error, sometimes you have to try again if the mirror has a problem, but what you're gonna wanna see is, is all of them um, successfully installed. Uh, and, and there it is. So all those have installed. So now what we're going to do is uh, start the service. So we can just copy and paste over the start slap D service. And then uh, we'll actually enable it um, at boot. Um, and then what we're going to want to do is uh, set a, um, a password. This is going to be the master password for your uh, OpenLDAP instance. And you're going to get a uh, hashed password here. So I'm going to actually copy and paste that into a safe area over here because we're going to use it in a config in a little bit. Um, so I'll come back over here. Now we're going to want to change to the um, working directory, which is uh, etsy open LDAP slash d.d. Um, and there's not a lot in there, but we're going to drop a lot of files in there. And this is effectively going to be our working directory for a good majority of, uh, of this um, situation. So we're going to use a lot of VI um, to create and edit files. So you might want to click the link in the uh, doc to get a tutorial on that. I'll, I'll try and explain things um, as we go for those who aren't as familiar with Linux, but I'm going to go ahead and actually create a new file. So all I have to do is VI command and then the name of the file that I want to create, which in this case is uh, db.ldif. And then it will actually open up a file. Um, and we can actually copy and paste uh, the information here uh, in there. And I'm gonna fix that password later. Um, one thing you'll notice sometimes with the copy and paste is uh, it does kind of uh, sometimes drop the front line. So be very, very careful when you copy and paste this stuff, um, you know, or season person you can transfer the files, you know, work on the files ahead of time and then transfer it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and press the escape to get back to the command line and, and right quit that. So now you'll see that I have the db.ldif uh, file um, in there. Um, but I actually forgot to do something. So I'm going to actually come back over and copy the password that was generated um, in that previous step uh, in here. I pressed I to get into the insert command. Paste that in, I'll actually drop that break, escape, colon, right quit to actually save the file. 
Um, oh, actually, I'll leave that open and minimize it. And uh, make sure that, yeah, this over here from where we entered the password matches this. So we're in good shape. Um, so now what we're going to do is, oh, I, I guess I should make note that, because I'm working a little bit fast here, that uh, as I highlighted in green, I'm using brianb.net domain, um, and I've created the user LDAP admin, Brian, dot brianv.net kind of uh, context here. So you're gonna wanna change um, any of those areas in green to match the context of your domain. So that could be a dot local domain or it could be uh, your own domain depending on uh, whatever you wanna do. Um, so that's in there now. Now what we'll do actually is run this through LDAP, uh, open LDAP. Um, so it'll uh, add that um, information in there. Then we're gonna create a new file. And I used a lot of information I got from other people, including itzgeek.com for this. They've got some good information on it. I've kind of modified it. I've also used some uh, different OpenSSL configs um, that I like better. Um, but you can read more there, but I'd like to give them a, a bit of a, a shout out there. So again, we're gonna copy uh, and paste all these lines. Um, and again, we lost the, the first line. Um, just copy and paste, so kind of a little bit of an annoyance, but. That didn't come in either. Copy, paste, there we go. You can see again that we're going over here by this CN name, again that LP, LDAP admin, uh, DC Brian V and DC net um, are in there. Right quit that. We'll bring this file in. And this is what you want to see. Go back down here. Um, now we're going to copy some sample databases um, over. Going a little bit quick, but uh, you can see some of the descriptions of what we're actually doing. Uh, we're going to take ownership of those files um, or give it to the LDAP um, service account, and then we're going to add those schemas um, in by copying and pasting these three commands. And we're going to do a vi base.ldif. Again, we'll copy all this. Note the green areas that will be changed. Um, and then again, we have to add that top line back, or top two lines in this case. So just be extra careful. Um, take your time. So dn equals uh, dc equals Brian, dc equals net, and then the top. Uh, it's just Brian B. It's sort of the NetBIOS name. Um, you can see other information down here. We're going to create no U for people and no U for group. Um, we're going to create a LDAP admin user. It's actually um, a bad copy and paste from from earlier. So I'll actually fix that there. Um, and uh, right quit that. And we're going to copy this um, command, actually add that uh, file in. So we're not modifying, this is actually adding that context. And you can see um, the command context here, again, is specific to my user. I'm gonna get prompted for that master password. And we can see that that was um, entered uh, or added into uh, OpenLDAP. Now we're going to create a actual user. I'm gonna create a read-only user that I'll use uh, to read the directory, but you might wanna repeat this uh, multiple times. I guess I didn't need to actually copy that, but. And once again, I don't know why this is happening to me today. Up top, why this 
ESPN. And uh, again, the name of my user is read because it's just going to be a read account. It's going to be the OU people on the domain, brianv.net. Um, I'm going to leave the rest of this blank, but you can see that I've got a working directory. CNUID may be important depending on how you're going to log in, but you can actually add additional fields uh, in this if you'd like. Um, we're going to set the password in another area. So I'm going to right quit that. And I'm going to add this user into um, LDAP, and I'm going to use my LDAP admin account uh, to import. So I'll have to provide the password for that. And again, you adjust your context appropriately. Now we're going to want to set the password. Uh, and that context is here. It's a little bit um, confusing, but LDAP password, uh, this is the actual password. So this is just a development environment. So you're gonna to wanna to put your own password in there for that read user. And then you're gonna use the context of LDAP admin to uh, execute that command against the, this UID here. And the password here is the master password. So now I've got pass, uh, a user called read uh, with password of kind of password. And then we can do a quick uh, LDAP search to see if that user is in there. And you can see that uh, that user comes up, um, UID read in the OU people, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're gonna wanna configure our firewall to uh, allow LDAP. And then reload the firewall. Now you'll see that this step is optional. Now, if you're just going to be doing local authentication in a trusted network or on a VLAN or something like that, you could use uh, LDAP you know, 389 clear, um, but I want to use uh, LDAP S or uh, LDAP over SSL because of uh, security reasons. I'll have auth requests coming from clients uh, potentially over the internet even um, for this particular example. So I will complete the optional steps, but you could actually skip this and then go all the way down uh, to verify your uh, network firewall, not the VM firewall, but the network firewall, and then you can actually go ahead and um, start testing uh, against it using just standard LDAP. So I'm going to actually change my working directory here to uh, PKI TLS certs, um, and I'm actually going to make a server key, and I'm going to give this a password, which you'll want to remember. Then we're going to want to uh, sign the key. I'll have to use that password we just set. And we just sort of overwrote it now. Uh, and what we'll do is make a CSR, or a certificate signing request. And you're going to want to fill this out. You see the green areas here. Um, fill this out to match. This is what the certificate would look like um, in the LDAP browser. Um, and you know you may want to get one that's actually officially signed by you know a, a true CA, but um, this is just a self-signing process. And I've already uh, got a a record in for demo.brianv.net. These extra attributes aren't required, um, and you can see now that we've you know we've got some of these files that we've created. Now we're gonna to need to sign the CSR to create an actual certificate. And you now have the server.crt. Um, so what you might wanna do though is, um, is copy that and, or you know, SCP it or FTP it out. You can do yum install FTP it and then send it to an FTP server because you may need to import that into your client um, to, to have a match. Um, certain applications or appliances might require that. Um, otherwise, you know, it won't have the client side serve. So that's it. We might as well grab the CSO and the key at the same time. Um, I'm actually going to copy all these commands here to copy these um, into the right uh, folders uh, if it's not already done. And I'm going to, again, copy all three lines here um, and put ownership on those certs. Um, and then I'm going to create another modify command to import that into open uh, LDAP. So vi um, SSL dot LDAP. Actually, I should probably throw this back into my working directory, but uh, we'll just call it locally. Um, and uh, 
put this syntax in, which we'll, we'll call that again. My copy and paste didn't work. Uh, change type modify dn uh, cn equals config. I quit, and then we will copy that command in. And uh, note that I'm calling it because I'm now in this search folder. And we can see that that worked. Um, and then this is an important step, uh, but we're going to want to do uh, edit the Etsy sysconfig slap D file. Uh, we're going to go down to the ninth line right here, which is a slap D URLs. I'm going to press I to go into insert mode, and I'm going to add LDAP S here. So it'll take requests on that. I quit, and then we're going to restart open all that, uh, which is done. And then, um, yeah, again, there's a little reminder here. You might want to pick up your, your certs and store them somewhere else. Um, I did put in documentation. You're going to make sure that your server ex, uh, accepts TCP 389 and 636. It's already done in my firewall for this VM. Um, and then that's effectively it. So what we're going to do now is launch a LDAP browser. And again, this is running in um, Google Cloud Platform. And I already have demoed up primevi.net um, DNS translated to it. So this machine over here is completely different uh, IP address. So this is truly going to be over the net. Um, and using this, I'm using Softera LDAP Browser 4.5. That's linked in this document if you want to go get it. Um, it's a nice little LDAP browser. But you can come in here and I'll type this as our, my clear, um, uh, like just TCP 389 clear. And I'm going to type demo.burningv.net and use 389. Fetch the, that's usually a good sign. That means that it actually worked. It fetched the, the root. I'll do next. We'll use a simple login, and I'm going to type in that UID equals read, uh, colon in the OU people, um, co sorry, colon, comma, OU people, comma, DC, Brian B, DC .net, and put the password uh, in there, and uh, press finish. And you can see now I have my... Um, LDAP uh, in here, so I can go into my people and I can actually uh, see the UID read. Now you may want to put other users in there, like I'm Brian, so I can create a Brian user, I can create multiple different users that I might use for some sort of authentication, VPN, or, or likewise. Um, go ahead and close that. Um, so that's showing the clear connection works. Uh, now we'll test that our um, certs work. So do LDAP best. I'm going to do demo.brianv.net. I'm going to use secure connection SSL. That's going to change me to port 636. So again, I'm sure your firewall's accommodating for that. Uh, fetch base DNs. I'm getting a self-signed certificate warning here. I like this client. It doesn't make me load it. Um, I can actually look at the certificate, and it's all that stuff that we typed uh, just moments ago. Um, I did, it, during that command, I did make that a 10-year, 3,650-day key. Um, so you don't have to worry about that for 10 years, but all that information we typed in, in that, um, you know, kind of survey form is, is all in here. And you can see this is a non-trusted uh, cert, but I'm going to go ahead and press yes. Um, pull that context, still log in, but now I'm doing it uh, over SSL. I'm going to take that. It's nice that this remembers things. And connect in. And again, we can see now our group and I can start. Um, you know, offing against these, uh, these users. Um, that's really it. That's how easy it is to set up um, open LDAP on Linux and then to protect it with uh, LDAP over SSL. So hopefully you found this video helpful.